Led Zeppelin is the biggest selling hard rock band of all time. The founder of the band was Jimmy Page. Page was extremely interested in the occult and magic. Quote, encountering his writings for the first time at age 11, Page immersed himself in Aleister Crowley's writings as a teen and young man. He began collecting rare magic books. He opened an occult bookstore in London called Equinox. Led Zeppelin's 1976 album called Presence features a family sitting around a table staring at a black obelisk. The obelisk is an occult symbol. However, I've, I've, I've read books and spent a lot of time reading books on uh, mysticism of uh, Eastern and Western traditions and, and, um, and uh, comparative religions. And, uh, and then astrology, etc. Page's fascination with Crowley led many to believe he was into black magic himself. I think he was absolutely fascinated with the man and the knowledge of the will. I don't think, I mean, you know, he owned a lot of manuscripts and he, he bought the Inverness Castle. That was also Crowley's. And I think with it, he had purchased a lot of manuscripts. And at one point he had a bookstore in England, an occult bookstore. And he was really more fascinated by the knowledge of it. It was a sincere fascination, and I think he took a lot out of it. He was very interested in those types of things, otherworldly things. By age 15, Jimmy Page had become a devout follower of occultist magician Aleister Crowley, who was dubbed the wickedest man in the world. But it wasn't until the... the congregation was inside. Crowley's motto of do what thou wilt was inscribed on the vinyl of Led Zeppelin's album Led Zeppelin 3. Jimmy Page was a collector of Aleister Crowley's memorabilia who quote had read a lot of Crowley and was fascinated by his ideas. Page encountered Crowley's writings at age 11 and later bought Crowley's home. Page said he believed Crowley's home would be a good atmosphere in which to write songs. Page did everything he could to return the house to how it would have looked during Crowley's ownership. Page commissioned an artist to paint some Crowley-esque murals on the walls. For a certain period of time, Page left the home in the care of his friend Malcolm Dent. Although Dent was a skeptic of the, quote, paranormal, he soon started to experience strange occurrences. After a few weeks, he heard strange rumblings from the hallway, which stopped when he investigated, but resumed after he had closed the bedroom door. Dent awoke one night to hear what sounded like a wild animal snorting and banging outside his bedroom door. It went on for some time and it was not until morning that Dent dared to open the bedroom door. When he did, there was nothing there. Dent added, quote, whatever was there was pure evil. Another friend who had stayed at the home awoke one night claiming she had been attacked by some kind of devil. There were other occurrences such as chairs switching places, doors slamming open and closed for no reason and carpets and rugs rolling up inexplicably. Page's childhood friend Malcolm Dent stayed there for 20 years before Page sold the place. As he told the Inverness Courier in a 2006 interview, doors would be slamming all night. You'd go into a room and carpets and rugs would be piled up. Even though he's a self-described skeptic, Dent couldn't explain why any of this was happening. In 1975, he gave an interview to Rolling Stones magazine where he describes some of the feelings he got from the haunted monument. When the interviewer went on to clarify that Page himself never had contact with the spirits, Page cut in with, I didn't say that. He went on to tell the interviewer that he preferred not to discuss the issue further. 
What happened in Crowley's home is similar to what happens in some cases of haunted houses. Some might wonder why a demon would reveal a spiritual world to people by opening and closing doors and making other noises. The demon has a calculated reason for repeatedly making these annoying noises. The demon knows that if these noises happen frequently enough, a person will get extremely frustrated. Then it becomes more likely that a person will call out to the unknown spirit asking the spirit what it wants. The person might interact with the spirit so that it will stop bothering him. Once he willingly interacts with the evil spirit, he becomes open to demonic possession. When I was in a room alone, it felt like I wasn't alone, like there was like a presence there, something I'd not experienced before. And through 1989, this presence got stronger and stronger and stronger until um, I sat on, um, on, on a bed in an empty hotel room in um, early 1990, actually March 1990. And I said out into the room, if there's something there, would you please contact me? Because you're driving me up the bloody wall. Also, you said on a show with Terry Wogan back in April 29, 1991, you said the, the, the challenge started off with you're the son of God. This home looks quiet from the outside, but owner Deanna Simpson says several ghosts are haunting it, and she's caught them in photos and recordings, including this one. The majority are bad, dark forces, unhuman. Just a couple of minutes into the interview, our photojournalist Nick felt his wrist burning. Are you okay? Did you get scratched? He was behind the camera, but Simpson knew what had happened right away. She took us on a tour of the house. She shot video of this door. If that is you, would you please shut that door? Oh my God. It appears to close on its own, and both Simpson and her cat have been pushed down these stairs before. So far in this house, Nick has been scratched. I've been touched and pinched. We've seen strange lights on the walls and heard noises, and we haven't even gone down to the basement yet. So where is the place where you saw the shadow man picture? This photo was taken with a deer camera in the basement. Uh, this picture right here is the shadow man. Um, he's about seven foot tall. Simpson says she's scared by what's happened, but she and her husband have lived in this home for seven years. Her grown daughters refuse to stay here. We put everything into this house, and we do want to move but we would have to list it at such a price to where we could recoup what we put in. Meanwhile, the family has invited mediums, researchers, and priests to visit the home. Some time ago in this Litchfield home, wife and mother Pat Redding felt as if she were possessed by evil spirits. She went through a series of 16 exorcisms, witnessed firsthand by her daughter, Michelle. When you see the person that you love being attacked by something invisible, so heinous and so disgusting, you will look for anything to stop it. The situation started, says Michelle, with strange banging noises in their home. It moved on to a mysterious overturning of all their furniture and eventually to attacks on Pat Redding from an invisible force. It would rip her hair out. There'd be plenty of witnesses and it would rip it right out of her scalp. An invisible force. She'd scream, she'd jerk backward. I'd turn around, she'd be in pain. Of course, she would panic, she'd cry, she was shocked. And did she have actual physical marks on her body? Absolutely. Yes. And they couldn't have been self-inflicted? No. Bite marks on her back. She would end up with black and blue marks in the most bizarre places that she wouldn't have been able to do herself. But how do you know that it's not uh, somebody with psychological problems? I mean, different psychological problems can manifest themselves in very strong Absolutely. ways. She um, uh, was found to have no psychosis. She, there was nothing wrong with her. Medically? Physically, everything had been ruled out. Exhausted. And, she, to, yeah. and to that point, that's when a decision had to be made. And that's when, yeah, actually, we had the Roman Catholic Church involved. With Our brother who art in heaven, have it be thy name. Connecticut Bishop McKenna agreed to perform the exorcism, although it was not officially sanctioned by the Vatican. 
Exorcists say it's the demons inside that give the possessed strange voices and unusual strength. They say that necessitated restraining Pat during her exorcism. Before this happened, did you believe in possession? Did you believe? No. Before this happened, we weren't your average middle class family. Then what do the two of you say to people out there watching this who I'm sure are thinking, these look like perfectly nice people, but you cannot convince me your mom was possessed by demons. There's really no way to convince them unless they want to believe. But I knew my mother and she didn't believe at all in that. And it existed. On March 20th, 2012, Jimmy Page released an album called Lucifer Rising and other soundtracks. It contained music that Page produced but never used for Kenneth Anger's film Lucifer Rising. Page subsequently committed to performing the musical score of Anger's film Lucifer Rising. Lucifer Rising began production in 1967, but was plagued by tragedy. A five-year-old boy named Goddard, cast to play the Lucifer child, leapt from his apartment window to his death. Bobby Boussoulet, cast to play the Lucifer teen, joined the Manson family and murdered school teacher Gary Hinman. On Jimmy Page's website, he says these music tracks, which were originally produced in the early 1970s, quote, have been revisited, remixed, and released for the first time. Page lists some of the tracks on the album titles like Lucifer Rising and Incubus. Incubus is considered to be the name of a demon. Many of the most well-known rock musicians in history were fans or had a devotion to the Satanist Crowley. According to Beatles drummer Ringo Starr, the cover of their Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club album showed people the Beatles liked and admired. This included the Satanist Aleister Crowley. The Doors had a picture of Crowley on their album cover. 